Jalen Reed of Olive Branch High School, an outstanding quarterback, has just committed to Tennessee. If you couldn't figure that out with his <laughs> orange sweatshirt. And did you not have an orange set of, set of pants? Man, when I picked out the outfit, she thought it was orange, but uh, when I got the jacket on, it was That's orange. <laughs> yeah. You call yourself a lockdown corner, which you are. How do you get that verbiage of lockdown? How do you earn that adjective, so to speak? Uh, I mean, uh, I mean, I play several games, and legit half of the game, they just stopped throwing it my way. Like, they legit just stopped throwing it my way. Just straight run support. You had a, a lot of time before you really had to make that decision in going to Tennessee, but you just made this decision in committing to them. Why now? Uh, I mean, it took a lot of weight off my shoulders, but uh, Tennessee was uh, actually, uh, they was taking, uh, they was only taking so many corners, and after I visit down there, it showed me and my family a good time, so I felt like that's where I wanted to go. You recently had a visit with them. What did they all show you? What were they telling you about how they want to use you in their defense? Uh, when we went down there, it actually wasn't like, it didn't even feel like recruiting. Like, we went down there. I mean, my mom wanted to see the facility, the academic side, so they showed her, and then she wanted to see where we lived at. Like, the dorms, like, like they just got some new dorms, like, last year, so they're brand new. They're huge. They're huge as well. And uh, she wanted to see the academic side. They sat down with a whole council, I mean, the whole day. And uh, we went to the spring game. We just watched it. I felt like I could come in and contribute at defensive back. And the coaches, they just told me, uh, they just told me they wanted to give me at Mississippi, come help them be good. Again, uh, just, yeah, that's all that. What has Butch Jones told you about your skill set? Uh, it, was, it actually wasn't Coach Jones. It was, uh, it was my extra position coach, Coach Warren. He told me he liked my length, my ability, put my foot in the ground, change direction, and uh, my form on tackles and legit just covering ability. Do you have an idol that you look up to at your position at the college or the NFL level? Who would that be? Uh, I actually like Patrick Peterson. He's a long corner. And he played, I ain't going to say I play like him, but I try to resemble him a little bit. Well, years from now, people are going to say they play like Jalen Reed. <laughs> For you, what are you trying to get accomplished this senior year as far as continuing to improve your skill set and your technique out there? Uh, like you said, I'm going to try to continue. I mean, I work every day, continue to get better every day. Um, and also, my goal is to help get some of my teammates on offense. Since now I know where I'm going to school, but I, as schools come by, I tell them about my teammates and try and get them exposure as well. For everything that you are accomplishing and have accomplished on the football field, what kind of sacrifices did you have to make off the field to make all of this happen? Uh, sacrifices made off the field. Uh, transferring all the branch, that was the first one. Because uh, I didn't always go to all the branch. I actually went to uh, Lewisburg. But like in high school, I told my mom I wanted to go play football at Olive Branch because back then it was the booming program. So I wanted to be a part of it. So we made that first sacrifice to move to Olive Branch. And once I got to Olive Branch, weight room, they got me bigger. Then my mom had to make sacrifices to work long hours to take me to camps. I mean, so she used to work gray shifts, so she'd be tired. Or I help drive sometimes. Then come back home. Then it'd be another weekend, be back to back weekends. And like now, I'm on the 7017 Mississippi Grind. And we practice like two or three times a month, and that's like a two, two hour, 30 minute drive just to go practice for four hours. I mean, and it's, all that just got me better. The time commitment that you talked about with your mom and how much she's had to sacrifice for you to make this all possible, for you to finally decide on Tennessee, what did that moment have to mean for her? Uh, like, when we was talking about it, she was, she was just like, you really gonna do it? You really gonna commit? And I was like, yeah, I feel like it. And then um, she was just like, if you want to go there, I feel comfortable. She's like, she like the academics, the coaches, the staff, she like everything about it. So she was like, if that's your decision, I'm going to go with you. But she was like, we're going to come see if you go down there. I was like, all right. And she was just happy. The drive that you have on and off the football field, how much of that is powered by making your mom proud? Uh, a little bit all of it, because uh, like I said, uh, I play for her and my little sister. So like, I think like last year, my little sister's birthday, uh, we made a bet. I was like, I'm going to get an interception for you. Like I actually got the interception for it, so it was like it was like a little challenge for me. But like now, nah. like when I'm playing, I'm like I can't, if I get hit hard, I got to get back up because I know my mama crazy. She's gonna try to get up there, so I try to get back up. And she always just say I'm a daredevil, so I just do anything and I just just play my assignment. We know cornerback safeties are notorious for trash talking. It sort of comes with the position. How much of that do you do on the field as part of? Your position and playing defense. Uh, I mean, I mean, golly, it comes with it. But like, <laughs> usually now, when I go out there, people already know of me, so I just I don't got to talk much. But 
Then they start talking crazy, and I just have to go on, hop them up, and I hit them across. Just got to play my game a little bit more aggressive. Do you have a word or a few words that you'll say to them that you regularly will say to offensive players when you're going up against them one-on-one? -on -one? I just tell them, I say, yeah, get better routes. You, you're going too slow, like, you slow, man. Just going to go get your twos out. Cause I'm like, they just ain't on my level. That's why we just tell them, they get mad. With all the offers that you've got from SEC schools and beyond, Tennessee is the where you're settling right now. All the attention you're getting, how do you, though, still remain humble with all that you still have to accomplish and work to get? How do I remain humble? Uh, I, don't think, I don't think I learned that from the process. I honestly think that's just me and my personality. Like, I don't brag about nothing. I don't talk about it. Like, I'm not going to be like, oh, I just got this offer. Like, it's, it's an accomplishment. But I've never been the type to brag about nothing. My last question for you, have you ever thought about, with everything that you've overcome, how much of an inspiration you are, not only to your mom, your sister, your football team, but also the community? Uh, like I said, I don't know. That's the part of the humble side of me. I mean, people probably give me the inspiration of, of a way out, because I mean, nobody gave me nothing. I work for all the things I got. I work for everything. So I mean, inspiration, I mean, you can get it wherever you play it, regardless of how you produce. So you just got to make good plays. Your film talks for it. Jalen Reed, we are so excited to see you at Tennessee. And uh, just so proud of you, man. You inspire us so much. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. Jalen Reed of Tennessee <laughs> heading there after this season. He's got one more year as a senior at Olive Branch.